This is the Louis T. Network. In the lab room. Welcome, you are in the lab room. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me here to break down the afternoon snoozer in week four that was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers hosting the Arizona Cardinals, two teams looking to try to get back on track, or I shouldn't say back on track for the Buccaneers. They were never on track. They haven't won in 2013 to this point. Cardinals, after getting a win two weeks ago at home versus Detroit, has struggled, and so they're looking to try to get back on track. And I, I was talking to a viewer of this show, a, a good friend of this program, and he's a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. And I told him that I was actually looking forward to watching this football game. There was no reason for me to have an extra vested interest in this game prior to the move being made to bench Josh Freeman. And he wasn't even active for this game. And, you know, Jay Free is my guy. Jay Free is my guy. And so... I wanted to see what Mike Glennon was going to bring to the table. So all of a sudden, this game was must-see TV for me. And what I got was <laughs> an absolute clinic on how not to play offense on both sides of the football for both teams. Now, look, granted, both of these teams are good on the defensive side of the football, especially the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They can play some defense. And I've already said this a number of times. This defense isn't an 0-4 defense, but this offense is an 0-4 offense. And right now, the offense is doing more damage than the defense is doing damage. And so, uh, it's hard to stomach that type of football. I tell you what, if you're a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan, it's going to be pretty hard to get you to watch that type of football every single week. If you're an Arizona Cardinals fan, you won the football game, and you'll take it any way you can get it. I say this all the time. As long as you're putting another number in that left-hand column, you'll take it. But boy, boy, was this ugly or what? I actually sat down, and I started writing a book during this game. You know what it was called? 1,000 Ways to Get a Running Back the Football. Because... It seemed like watching this game, that's all these teams were doing. <laughs> that's all these teams were doing was finding ways to get the running back the football. In Arizona, they were finding and creating ways to get Andre Ellington the football. After a poor showing, and Bruce Arians talked about it after the game. He's like, look, man, he's got to play better. And he was speaking of Rashard Mendenhall. He's got to play better. He can't play that way. He said, okay, forget about him. I'm putting in Andre Ellington, and we're going to throw him wheel routes. We're going to throw him screens, check downs. We're going to throw him every kind of route you can imagine. Forget about Larry Fitzgerald, who is the best player on our team. We're going to throw the football to Andre Ellington 900 times, and then we're going to turn around and hand it to him as well. And so that was, whoo, that was bad football on their part. Then you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they're just as bad, if not worse, because and they actually started the game off not that bad. They jumped out to a 10-0 lead in this football game. Glennon throws a touchdown pass early on, and you're thinking, hey, maybe this guy will be a spark for this team. And they got awfully quiet after that. And Doug Martin... And, I got a best friend. I got two best friends, two buddies that have been with me since day one. One's an Oakland Raiders fan. One's a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. And the Bucs fan right now, he has actually turned on the franchise, and he's asking for the Bucs to lose in miserable fashion so that Greg Schiano gets fired and so that this offensive coordinator, he can't stand Mike Sullivan. And after watching Buccaneers football a little bit last year and a lot more closely this year, I understand his beef with Mike Sullivan. This guy stinks as an offensive coordinator. There is no creativity, no variety, no sense of urgency with this Bucks offense. It's vanilla. They look like the preseason every week. 
You know how people talk about, oh, you're not going to show a lot. It's pretty vanilla in the preseason. Well, that's Mike Sullivan every week. How do you beat your head against a brick wall and not get tired of doing so? Doing the same thing over and over again, even though it's not working, is the definition of insanity. And they ran... <laughs> They ran Doug Martin 27 times for 45 yards. <laughs> what are you doing? At what point do you honestly look at yourself and realize, okay, maybe the run isn't working today. Maybe I should try something different. At what point do you realize that, hey, I got to take the shackles off this young guy. And look, Glennon, he threw the football as much as you could ask a rookie in his first start to throw it, except they were all check downs. So what I'm asking is, how do you push the ball down the field? How do you threaten the defense when all you're doing is checking the football down and running the football? And this is what the Buccaneers do every week. They hand the ball off to Doug Martin on first down, on second down, and throw it on third down. Well, on this occasion in this game, they'd run it on first down and occasionally run play action fake off the run on second down and then have to do something because they were in third and long on third down, which ended up probably being a check down or a pass to the tight end. You've got Vincent Jackson and you've got Mike Williams. Do what Josh Freeman does. Do what Jay Free does. Throw it up. Let these guys make plays. They know how to go after the football and go get it. Anyway, Mike Sullivan stinks as an offensive coordinator. And until some things change offensively, this Buccaneers team is going to continue to stink it up on the offensive. And this was an absolute funk fest. I'm glad to know it wasn't me. It was them. The stench you smell of funk with this football game here. Somebody had to win. And it ends up being the Arizona Cardinals. And the momentous moment of this game changed this football game. It was the first of two interceptions thrown by Mike Glennon. And they couldn't have come at a worse time. Look, the Cardinals were struggling. Struggling to score in this football game. Glennon gives them the opportunity to get on the board. They had gotten a field goal. They still needed a touchdown to tie the Buccaneers up. They weren't doing anything offensively, and he gives them a ray of hope, throws a pick, Patrick Peterson picks it off, takes the ball deep into Buccaneers territory. A couple plays later, finally, finally, the Cardinals realize that Larry Fitzgerald is on their football team and gets him the ball. I do not understand how Larry Fitzgerald is not targeted 10 times every game. I don't care if he's double covered. I don't care if he's triple covered. He's Larry Fitzgerald. You throw him the football. So he's in the end zone, touchdown, it's 10 all. Then Mike Glennon drops back, throws another pick after the Arizona Cardinals have taken the lead, 13 to 10. Patrick Peterson picks it off to secure the victory. Cardinals get it done on the road in the ugliest fashion you will ever see in your life, but it's a win nonetheless. 13 to 10, taking their record to 2 and 2 on the season. Meanwhile, the Bucks fall to a dreadful. Oh, and four in a season, and they did not look any better with Mike Glennon at quarterback. In his defense, it's his first start. I expected him to play exactly the way he played. Talking to that viewer that I was talking about earlier in the show when I was talking about this game, I told him, because he asked me, what did I expect from Mike Glennon in his first start? And I said, look, I expect him to be a rookie, I expect him to struggle. I expect him to make his fair share of plays, but at the end of the day, I expect at least two turnovers, a couple of turnovers, and I expect him to lose this football game. And that's exactly how this thing played out. Look, that's what happens to rookies in the National Football League. And they went up against a solid, not great, but an extremely solid Arizona Cardinals defense. They stopped the run. They made Mike Glennon have to beat him, and he couldn't do it. And uh, Mike Sullivan, the offensive coordinator for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, either they got to fire this guy or he's got to get better. But what he's putting forth on the field on Sundays isn't a winning product in Tampa Bay. And so some things need to be shuffled around. Look, it, it, I didn't think it was the quarterback that was the issue in Tampa Bay. I thought it was the office of coordinator. I said I wasn't going to get into that, but that's where the crux of the problem is in Tampa Bay. Until that's solved, 
the product that you'll put on the field each week will look a lot like the one you saw on Sunday. Big win for the Cardinals on the road. They get their first road victory of the season. As they get a win 13-10 over the Bucks. they go to 2-2 two two on the season once again. Bucks fall to 0-4 on the season. That's going to do it for this installment of In the Lab Room. I thank you for joining me. Remember, if it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here in the Lab Room. Thank you for joining me. See you next time. Like the content? Want more? Sub up. In the Lab Room.